I love to call on the name of Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. I love. There is power in the name of There is power in the name of So much power in the name of I love There is love in that name of There is love in that name of So much love in that name of I love I love There is joy in that name of There is joy in that name of So much joy in that name of Once more and again, a few of your believing children have assembled themselves in the house of prayer, saying thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, you brought it from early this morning to the present time, and we're just saying thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, you didn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us, and we're saying thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we look back over the hills and the mountains and the valleys that you brought us from. Oh, Heavenly Father, you brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm say it again. You brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Oh, Heavenly Father, you brought us from a time where we was in the cotton field. Yeah. We were behind a mule, oh, Heavenly Father. Uh -huh. But now we ride in fine cars and have fine houses. Yes, but we won't give you the praise. Yes. I'm down here on my knees calling upon your yes. holy divine name. Oh, Heavenly Father, there's somebody in here this evening uh -huh. that's going through something. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, I don't know what it is. It ain't for me to know. But, oh, Heavenly Father, I'm calling on you to, to do a healing. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, somebody got sickness in their body this evening. Yeah. Somebody's battling cancer, oh, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Somebody's battling heart trouble. Yeah. Somebody's battling sugar diabetes, oh, Heavenly yeah. Father. 
But oh Heavenly Father, I know you's a healer. Yes, sir. Oh Heavenly Father, I know you're a healer. Yes, sir. Oh Heavenly Father, you gave you made sight to the blind. Yes. You made the dumb talk. Yes. Made the lame walk. Yes, and oh Heavenly Father, you raised Lazarus from the grave yes. after three days of being dead. Yes. Oh Heavenly Father, I know you're a good God. Yes, I know you're a merciful God. Yes. I know you're a healing God. Yes. Oh Heavenly Father, touch us this evening. Oh, Heavenly Father, we need a one touch from you. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm calling on you, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm calling on your holy divine name. Oh, Heavenly Father, I know you're a doctor in a sick room. Because you stopped by this old body of mine, oh, Heavenly Father. In 2020, oh, Heavenly Father, you heal me, oh, Heavenly Father. And I know you're able to do all things but fail. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless the man that you planted in this vineyard. Bless the man that's going to bring the bread of life to us today. Oh, Heavenly Father, we say in this 154 years a church anniversary. Yeah. But, oh, Heavenly Father, you reign for over 2,000 years. Uh -huh. Oh, Heavenly Father, we need to give you the praise. Yeah. We need to give you all the glory. Because, yeah. Heavenly Father, you died on that Sunday. You died on that Sunday, Sunday evening. I hung your head and died. Oh, Heavenly Father, you took your buried you in that tomb. But, oh, Heavenly Father, early, early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. I'm saying early Sunday morning. You rose with all power. All power in your hand. That's when you shed the blood for give us the right to the bread of life. Then, oh, Heavenly Father, when we come down to the end of our journey, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come down to the end of the journey on this side. What they call a dressing up room. We've been dressing up down here for a long time, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you that you please, please, Jesus, save us a home somewhere. Somewhere in your kingdom. Yeah. Where well, can we uplift your name or better we doing down here? We ask for these blessings in your son, Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. Whoa. Come along, my friends. Come along. Get a
place, but I thank these deacons for this devotion. Seems like they came to have church. You know, at first they come with us, I love to call on the name of Jesus. Then they invited us, come along, they said, come along, my friends, come along. Get aboard this train. Anybody want to be on the train? Anybody want to go see Jesus one day? Uh, I ain't telling you to go today, but when you get ready to leave this world, you ought to want to have somewhere to go. I know I want somewhere to go when I leave here. Oh, yeah, thank you for the invitation. Come along, my friends. Come along. All right. We're going to go ahead with the program. I don't want to get started talking because sometimes I get started talking and you have to take the mic from me. But I just want you to know that I know who Jesus is. I know whose side I'm on. And I don't mind letting you know whose side I'm on. Anybody else in here don't mind letting you know whose side they are? If you don't mind, you ought to just wave your hand. Sometimes if you can't say a word, you ought to just wave your hand if you can't say a word. Ah, he woke us up this morning. He gave us a mouth to talk this morning so we can say hallelujah. And we can say thank you, Jesus. He's a mighty God. I'm going to go on with the program. We're going to have a welcome. And it says by Deacon Pete Gresham. And uh, then I'll let you know about the scripture. Deacon Gresham, I know you just finished devotion. But they got you down for well. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. You know, because somebody didn't rise this morning. And somebody didn't ain't able to do what I'm doing this day. And so we are, I count it as a blessing to be here. To praise the Lord. Because he done did so much for me. If you know my story, you know what I'm talking about. Ain't it good? But I come to give you a welcome to the Barbers Creek Baptist Church. We have church every Sunday. The new time is at 11. We have Sunday school at 9.30. And on Wednesday night, we have prayer. We have Lent. One, one at 6, 12, and 7.30. And then on Thursdays, after that's over, we still have prayer. So we still calling on the name of the Lord. On behalf of Reverend David, Sister David, and all of Bible's Creek members, we'd like to welcome you to our 154 church anniversary. You welcome once, you welcome twice, named three times in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, we do thank you, sir. Those of us who know the Lord and we know we're in his house, we feel welcome anyway. We thank you, Deacon Gresham. And now we have our, we're ready for our scripture and prayer. And I, I see the ministers are just now coming. Why don't we go ahead and sing a song, uh, Brother Shanta? What's his name, Shanta? Let me give them time to get situated here. I know they were back in the back, but just do a little music. Let them get situated for a minute. Oh, pass Be not a gentle say Say a Yeah. 
scripture by Reverend Jackson, and following that would be a prayer by Reverend Wilkins. And before that, it says a selection by the choir. Is that Baba's Creek Choir, or is there a guest choir coming? Don't know? There is supposed to be a guest choir. If there's a guest choir that was invited, will you all take a stand? And if not, they may be running a little late, but Baba Creek, I guess you know what you have to do when your guest choir doesn't come. So if you all don't mind, go ahead to, with the, to the choir stand while Reverend Jackson, Cicero Jackson is coming with the scripture so that we have a little less disruption. <laughs> Amen. We praise God today. We praise God for your patience. All right. And we praise God for being patient with us. You know that? Yes. scripture today from Psalms 149. Psalms 149. If you don't mind resting to your feet, please, as I read the word of God. Psalms 149. Verses 1 through 6. And these are the words that are recorded. Praise ye the Lord. Sang unto the Lord a new song, and his praise is in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in, the, in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Last verse. Let the high praises of, the God, of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Opportunity to be here for our anniversary for so many years. What an opportunity. We're going to go before the throne of God, grace to the Father. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is on earth. It is in heaven. Oh, Father God, we come saying thank you. Thank you for another day's journey, Lord. Thank you for being God and all God by yourself, Father God. Father God, we just bless your name, Father God. Lift you up, Father God. Father God, celebrating another togetherness, Father God. The numbers is okay, Father God, but just being in the house of God one more time together, Father, united, Father. Father God, we ask you to bless everyone that's in here, Father God, and the ones that's on their way, Father God, and the ones that want to get here weren't able to get here, Father God. We ask you to bless them in a powerful way, Father God. Father God, we ask you to bless our pastor, Pastor Jerry S. David, and First Lady. Then we're going to ask you to bless the minister that's going to bring the word, Father, that you just pour into his spirit that he can give us a word. And Father God, we did all we can do, Father God, and can't do no more, Father God. We ask you that you have a place prepared for us in your kingdom, Father. And we be able to say, well done, a gift, our good and favored son. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen, and amen. I think I turned it off. Amen. We thank uh, Reverend.
Reverend Jackson for bringing us God's word in the scripture. And we also so thank Reverend Wilkins for taking us to the throne of grace. Amen. Now we're going to be favored with the selection by the Barber Creek Baptist Church. And I know they're ready. Y'all looking good. Open your mouths and y'all sing good. After that selection, we will have reflections by Sister Dorothy Thomas and a tribute by Deacon Chris Rogers. So I will sit down for a minute. Baba Creek, come on, Baba Creek. Lift up, let's lift up Jesus, Baba Creek. I know Cheryl's up there and she's able. We got Deacon Gresham up there. Keep the fire burning.
connected they're so glad anybody else in here glad anybody else in here glad that you got connected with Jesus oh I'm glad about it I'm glad about it now we're going to be favored with reflections by sister Dorothy Thomas but before she come I just want y'all to know that I'm connected I'm connected with him and I'm glad about it come on sister Thomas Bible Creek is connected. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings come. Amen. Acknowledge Mr. Ceremony Minister Betty Kenny, guest speaker, Reverend David, Sister David, ministers on the roster. Amen. Reflection. Bible Creek Baptist Church anniversary is a time for reflecting. It's an occasion for giving thanks from where God has brought us as a church. To reflect is to look back. Mm -hmm. To look back is necessary. Yes, it's necessary to be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. right. So we gotta look back to be able to look forward. Mm -hmm. So it is today God has made it possible for us to gather here this day. Right. Barber Creek Baptist Church is here today celebrating 154 years. Amen. Look how far God has brought us. Look how far we have come in these 154 years, yes. through ups and downs, but through it all, God has looked on Baba Creek. Amen. He has done great things, and we today are filled with joy. Uh -huh. We can reminisce on those gone on from this earthly place, uh -huh. their contributions, their works, their struggles, yes, their trials, tribulations, as well so as challenges. Look around. Mm -hmm. Just take a moment to look around. Mm -hmm. Their legacy lives on. All right. Mm -hmm. On as we contribute and continue working together, praying together. Yes. We will not be discouraged. God is with us and will continue to keep us. He will never leave or forsake us. And as long as God is on our side, leading and guiding, the future remains bright for Barber Creek. For great things are yet to come. The journey continues and with unity, action, and love, and working together, being stepping stones and not stumbling blocks. We are better and stronger together. The past is behind us. The future is in front of us. And together with God's grace, we will continue to reflect on the past while striving to the future. Memories of the past and dreams for the future. May this day be a reflection on all that God has given us, all that has been achieved, and all that we inspire to be. Yes, we celebrate, we celebrate, we celebrate 154 years. And our prayers are that Barber Creek Baptist Church will continue to be blessed and will forever stand. Amen. Give her a hand. Some mighty reflections. 
have Dick and Chris Rogers coming up for a tribute, and we thank you for those reflections. Because you know, I'm, I'm not a member here, but I can even look around and see the great things you've been doing. Because I come here, I look up and I say, wow, they got, they got monitors up there, and I can look up there and see myself. <laughs> Rogers is coming. I need to go back there to adjust the mic every time I talk in it. It's a man that does everything. He runs back there and now he's going to run back up here and do a tribute. Just watch him. Give him a hand as he comes. And, Chris. and after Dick and Chris tribute, you may have to do some more. Choir, I want you to get ready with another selection right now. Janine, this is why you don't put Sandman on program, okay? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> it's my sister-in-law, so I don't have a choice. All right, everyone, I'm going to just echo some of the sentiments that Sister Thomas has already came. This is a tribute to the Barbers Creek Baptist Church. Today we celebrate 154 years of service, and as a young deacon at the church, it's very humbling to be able to see where we have came from to where we are now. I understand personally that it's a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment, a lot of devotion to get us to this point where we are at. We did not get here on our own. We know that there are so many before us that came, that made sacrifices, that made a commitment, that made a devotion to do what they needed to do at the church to make it so we could continue to be in operation, so that we can continue to grow and maintain. Um, as we work as deacons and leaders of the church, we understand the sacrifice and how hard it is and we have a luxury now that we didn't have back then, some of the enmities that they didn't have. Some of these people would take their time, take money out of their own pockets just to help this church to grow. So today we are able just to build on the foundation that they laid for us, and we do not take that for granted. We do not take it lightly. And I just don't speak for Barbers, uh, Barbers Creek Baptist Church. If you are part of a church that has 100 plus years, I want you to know you didn't get there on your own. Amen. <laughs> It's a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of sacrifices that were made for us to get to where we are today. And this is a moment where we not only reflect, but we pay tribute. We acknowledge them and recognize their commitment, their service, and let them know that they have not been forgotten. This is a day of celebration, but it's also a day of recognition because we know that we are not here only by our own merits. It's by the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of God that we are able to be here and have some of these luxuries that we have today. So we are thankful, we are appreciative, and at the end of the day, we still thank God that we are still standing, we are still serving, we are still worshiping, and we are still trying to do God's will. Amen. So today, we say to those of the past and to those of the present, happy anniversary, Barbara's Creek. Amen. Amen.
Give that choir another hand. They're singing like they came to celebrate this anniversary today. Congratulations to you, Baba Creek. I forgot to tell you that. But congratulations to you. Good thing I didn't forget to thank the Lord. That's who brought you. All right, we're down to our financial appeal. And uh, we've been having a good time so far, so let's not stop now. Deacon Ellis Rogers and Deacon... So you want who else is on here? Brother Donald Mayweather. They have you down for a financial appeal. And afterwards, uh, Reverend Jackson, would you take it to the offering after afterwards? Victory. 
share, we pray. Father God, as we come to you at this time, yes. we come just to say thank you, dear Lord, thank you. for this time that we're able to spend together in worship, Father God. Yes. You get all the praise and honor. Uh-huh. And Father God, we're just going to give back a portion of what you have given yes. us for the building of your kingdom, Father God. We pray in your holy and righteous name. Amen. 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 God. How many of you know he's done great things? Uh, you look around Baba Creek and you see he's done great things. Uh, when he woke you up this morning, wasn't that a great thing he did for you? Don't take it lightly. He's done great things for us. Praise God. Praise God. We're just going to have church anyhow. Anyhow. Praise God. Pastor David. It's your time to introduce our guest minister for the day. And then choir, you all are doing such a great job. Give that choir a hand again. I mean, that choir is just singing like they love the Lord. So, Pastor David, after you introduce our guest minister and the choir sings, we will hear from the Reverend Dr. Richard Haynes from Salem Baptist Church. And you all don't have to be worried with me anymore. My time is done doing this. Thank you. It's been my pleasure, Reverend David. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Now say it like you mean it. Amen. amen. We thank God for each and every one that's here. It's just a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, my task is easy to introduce uh, Reverend Haynes. Amen. I wanted to say, when you called his name a while ago and told me what, told what church you formed just a few minutes ago, you introduced him right then. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because he's one that everyone knows. He's not a stranger here. He ran revival for me for years. Amen. And we're looking forward to getting him back here for revival also. Amen. Because he's done such a great job. And we thank God for him being here. He's pastor of Salem Baptist Church, as Sister Kenny had previously said. He's been pastoring there for some 38, 36 years, amen, and that's, that's longer than some of, somebody in here has been living, amen, but we thank God for him for coming with us, amen, and, and we know he's going to preach, and we know he can preach, amen, amen. because, I, you know, a, lot, a whole lot of time we think preaching is when somebody gets up and preaching, everybody just jumping up and hollering, mm-hmm. preach, preach, and they, and, and just hollering at the preacher, but that's not really preaching. That's what you call having a good time. Amen. We had a good time. We was in them clubs. Didn't we? Amen. But when we came out, the good time was over. So if he come and preach the word to you, amen, when you get through and when you leave here, you'll still have it on the inside of you. Amen. Because so many times I heard people say, well, he sure did preach. What did he say? I don't know, but he preached. Amen. But he's going to preach and teach. Amen. Remember, Long time ago, they would just call it teach preaching. So he wanted those teach preachers. So we pray that when they stand, that, amen, they will accept the word of God from a man of God. And after the choir comes with the next election, the next fortune, we'll hear it be the voice of the pastor Richard B. Haynes. Pray for him, pray with him, that God might bless him, that he might bless us. Amen. Amen. amen.
wheels gone by. Hey, 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 hey. Have a good time. Come on. Come on in the room. And we're going to. We're going to have a good time. Doing what? Praise the Lord. And we're going to. We're going to have a good time. We'll be singing. In the room. And we're going to. We're going to have
to see folks just sing until they sing themselves happy. <laughs> Amen. I figured it out. If you, if you can't get happy, you don't, don't think nobody else going to get happy about it. Amen. 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 We give honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank him because he has spared our lives allowed us to be in his house one more time. Uh -huh. We are grateful because he has kept this church for 154 years. Y'all ought to bless the Lord for that. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Amen. There are not many things around here that have been around here for 154 years. And they had a whole lot, money than a whole lot more money than y'all had. <laughs> There are some banks that went under. <laughs> a whole lot of furniture stores that went under. <laughs> but thank God, Barber Creek <laughs> is still sitting right here. We, we just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. To my friend and my brother, Pastor Jerry David. I have admired this man for a long time. Just admired his ministry and the way he does ministry. He does ministry very effectively, and he doesn't make a whole lot of noise. And I thank God for that. It's just good to be able to see people working for the Lord. Amen. And uh, he does it, does it very effectively, and he just continues to run on in Jesus' name. Just glad to see you. Glad to see you. Glad to have this opportunity. All the preachers of the gospel in this house, that, that one right over there, that's my son. Reverend Dover is one of mine. Now, I, I can't keep up with him. <laughs> he's all over the place. But wherever he is, I know he's serving God. I know he's doing God's will, and I thank God for that. I do have my wife and my daughter with me. We are, we, we are trying to, uh, all the churches, you know, we're trying to get over COVID. We're trying to get folk back into one service. <laughs> And if we can get folk back into one service, maybe then we can start traveling. But I have my wife and my daughter, and I thank God for the Hillmans. They are always, always, we come this way. <laughs> we thank God. Amen, amen. Let me just ask the Hillmans and my wife, my daughter, y'all stand up back there. Y'all need to see these. Y'all know the Hillmans, I'm sure. Amen, 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 amen. We just thank God for you, Hillman, when they're... Whenever we come over this way, I know they're coming because this is, this is home <laughs> for them over this way. So we thank God. Uh, thank God for my wife. My wife doesn't tra get to travel. She's had some, some health issues, and she doesn't get to travel a lot now. But thank God she made it today. <laughs> amen, amen. I, I wanted you all to know who she is. I always like my wife to stand and I always like people to know who my wife is in case, in case y'all got something you want to say. <laughs> Make sure you know who not to say it around. <laughs> amen. 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 What a wonderful, wonderful day. I come, my job today is to preach the gospel. And I thank God for the opportunity, every chance God gives me. That's what I, he called me to do. And I promised him that I would do just that. I want to I wanna, I wanna take a book, look today at the book of Revelation. Book of Revelation. And, don't, and please don't let that scare you. It ain't all that deep. <laughs> it's just some more of the book. <laughs> just some more of the book. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3 and I want to just zero in on one verse and that verse is this behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And that's what I want to talk about. Right. I want to talk from that text there. 
I want to use for a subject, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? Brothers and sisters, if you'll go back just a few, well, it ain't a few years, a lot of years. A lot of years, you, you remember a time when as children, we didn't have all the play toys they got now. We, we didn't have the, the, the little guy boxes and things to play. We didn't have all of that. We had to make up something to play with. We had to, had to find something. Had to, had to find a way. And we didn't have video games. We didn't have none of that. Matter of fact, y'all might not believe it, but there was actually a time when children played outdoors. <laughs> Anybody remember that? That, yeah, that? that was a time when children played outdoors. Didn't have a lot of toys, but one thing that we did, that's one mode of uh, entertainment that I remember as a child. I remember when the newspaper would come on Sunday, there was a section in there, and there were crossword puzzles and all kinds of things, but there was one little place in the, in the funny paper that said, what's wrong with this picture? And you would spend all Sunday afternoon looking at that picture, trying to see what's wrong in this picture. Are y'all following me? Sometimes you see something like a man standing on first base with a helmet on. You know something is wrong with that picture. He, Either he ain't got he ain't got no business with a helmet on the on the baseball field. Yeah, yeah, we 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 see a, a rabbit in a tree eating nuts. That's wrong. That's wrong. Rabbit, rabbits don't climb trees. Yeah, we we find what's wrong with. It. But today, I, I want us to visit the apostle John, John the Revelator, and he he's painting for us here another picture. John is painting a picture of a man knocking at a door. All right, all right. Now, brothers and sisters, that's really not that unusual. If you want to get in, that's what you do. You knock at the door. At first glance, you don't realize how strange it is. But when you really look at it and read the Bible, you see that this is a strange picture. You really don't see how strange it is. Here, let me go. Let's go to the Word of God. Here's a portion of a letter. This letter is being dictated to John by Jesus himself. John is writing everything that Jesus tells him to write. Writing to, watch this, the church. He's writing to the church at Laodicea. And the line that catches my, 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 my mind is uh, that line that says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, somebody may not understand, yeah, but the bottom line is, if you're on the outside and you want to get in, the best thing to do is knock. Seems like a normal picture. If you're on the outside, you want to get in, you knock at the door. But it gets a little strange. When you consider who it is that's asking to get in. All right, all right. Gets a little strange when you find out that this is Jesus. You see it's in red writing? This is Jesus knocking on the door. So you begin to wonder, why would Jesus knock on anybody's door? He's got all power in his hand. He's omnipresent. He's, he's omnipotent. Why would he knock on anybody's door? All power is in his hands. He has a command over the angels of heaven, but why would he knock on anybody's door? But then, if that's not strange enough, here's where I want to get to. Look at who he's writing to. He's writing this letter to the church. Y'all hearing this? Follow me now. He's writing this letter is to the church. Jesus is writing a letter to the church. The one that he talked about in Matthew saying, upon this rock, I will build my church. 
Are y'all hearing me? That, that he's talking about the one where he left the keys to the kingdom with Peter, and that he could bind uh, what's on earth and what's on heaven. That yeah, the one, the church that he shed his only his own blood, blood for. But my brothers and sisters, doesn't it look strange now that Jesus, the Savior, what we're looking at, Jesus, the Savior, knocking and desiring to get into the church that belongs to him. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all hear me. This is Jesus on the outside, knocking on the door of his church, trying to get on the inside. Y'all got to agree with me. That's a little strange, isn't it? That's a little strange to have Jesus on the outside, knocking, desiring to get into his own church. But I got to tell you something, brothers and sisters. As strange as it seems, I believe we're living in a day where that goes on more than what you realize. Y'all ain't hearing me. I believe it goes on more than what you would realize. A scene of Jesus standing on the outside of the church, knocking and desiring to get in to his own church. The real problem is this. The real, here's the problem with it is a church ain't really a church if Jesus ain't in it. I just said something right there. I said a church really ain't a church if Jesus ain't is not found in it. And all around, I ain't talking about nobody, just talking about what I'm talking about. All around, you can find churches now that are well organized, they're busy, but if you tell the truth, Jesus is on the outside, knocking, desiring to get in. Well, the question got to be raised, how in the world did the church come to this? How did the church come to the point where we are trying to operate with Jesus outside, desiring to get in? Here it is right here in the text. Look at verse 15 says, he's out there because I know your works. See that? I know your works. I know you. Others may be fooled by your glitz and your glamour and by your wonderful programs, but Jesus says, I know your works. I hear your loud professions, but I know your works. I hear your impressions, your impressive mission statements, but I know your works. I see how busy you are, but I know your works. And the thing I know about you is that you have lost your fervor for me. You ain't excited about me. That's why I enjoyed hearing this choir a while ago. <laughs> See, yeah, I like to see folk get excited about Jesus. He says, you have lost your fervor. You're not excited about me anymore. And because of that, right here in the, in the book, he says, you are neither cold nor hot. He said, now, I, I'd rather you be either cold or hot. But because you are neither cold nor hot, look at it. He says, I will spill you out of my mouth. Yeah, that, that bird spew, that means vomit. He says, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you're neither hot or cold. In other words, you make me sick because you're neither hot nor cold. Brothers and sisters, the text suggests that there are some things about the church that make the Lord sick. Nobody wants to stay around anything that makes them sick. Neither hot nor cold. I, I'm from Gainesville. Y'all know me. Some of y'all. I'm, I'm from Gainesville. I'm, I'm from up there where all the chickens come from. And, and, and chickens, you know, chickens, I grew up, chickens were the center of our lives. Everybody here, you, had to, you couldn't get out of Gainesville until you touched a chicken somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you had to do something to a chicken before you ever left. Yeah, but, 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 but. I, I, here, here's in chain, and that was a term that we used to learn and have in Gainesville in the chicken capital. You hear people say he's running like a chicken with his head cut off. You heard that? Yeah, yeah, running like a chicken with his head cut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and what they were talking about is what would happen to anybody, any country folk out here. You see, Gainesville was country back then. You kill a chicken, and, and you, you take him to the chop block, and, and you do what you got to do. You remove his head, throw him under the tub, and you think that that thing is dead. You, you think, yeah, any, anybody around? Yeah, yeah. And many times you lift the lift the bucket up, and that thing, that joker would take off. <laughs> yeah, he take off, still 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 running. He still flapping his wings, and that was a scary thing. He did, but he don't know he did. Y'all ain't hearing me. He did, still flapping his wings, but he don't know. He dead. Are y'all hearing me? And that makes you feel a little queasy. You can relate to what Jesus is saying here. That's how I feel when I see a church. Y'all ain't hearing me. Flapping its wings and doing everything churches do and don't realize that thing is dead. I need to let you know beyond the shadow of a doubt. If Jesus is on the outside trying to get in, that thing is dead. Y'all hear me? If Jesus is outside, I don't care what we're doing up in here, that thing is dead. You see, my brothers and sisters, the church is only effective when it's on fire. When it's about the business of seeking and saving the lost. I don't care how big the campus is. Don't care how big the budget is. Don't care how many wonderful programs you have in the community. It really doesn't matter how great, how many great sermons fly across the pulpit. If lost people are not being saved, that thing is dead. If folk are not finding Jesus up in there, that thing is dead. Verse 16. Still Jesus speaking. He says, because you are lukewarm, because you're neither hot or cold, because you're floundering somewhere between life and death, dead and don't know it. He said, because of that, I will vomit you out of my mouth. He says, I got Jesus. Said, I got to separate myself from you because you don't know who you are. You, I got to say, Jesus is saying, if you're on fire, about the Father's business, I'll be right in the midst of everything you do. And even if you're dead, I am the resurrection and the life. I, I've already conquered death and the grave. So even if you're dead, I could deal with that. But because you're dead and don't know it, because you are neither hot nor Are y'all hearing this? Because you're dead and don't know it. You think, yeah, you think you got it going on. Matter of fact, read it right out of the Bible. Verse 17, you say you're rich. You say you're increased in goods and have need for nothing when the fact is you are miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. Verse 18, he wants the church to know that you can't operate in my name without me. Y'all hear me? You can't operate in my name without me. Churches don't last for 154 years without Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? You, you ain't been here 154 years without Jesus. He says, I'm not opposed to your programs. I'm all the wonderful things you're doing. But Jesus says, I got to be in the center of everything you do. He says, I, I cannot be left out. I don't want to be on the outside knocking, trying to get in. 19, verse 19, I, I'm bringing this to your attention. Jesus is saying to his church, I'm bringing it to your attention because I love you. I love you, and I love you. So I, I'm bringing it to your attention so that you can turn it around, so that you can repent, so that you can change your mind and turn it around. Jesus is saying, I'm on the outside. I'm looking in. But I'm not satisfied with being separated from my church. 
He says, so since I'm not satisfied with being out here, what I'll do, I'll just stand and knock. I don't want to be out here, but yeah, I'll just stand here and behold, I stand at the door and knock. What a powerful picture. Jesus, all power in his hand, standing and knocking on the door. Are y'all hearing me? It says so much about who Jesus is. Jesus says, I don't want to be your savior by force. I'm going to knock on the door, and if you'll open the door. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, yeah, I'll just stand and knock. All power is in my hands. If I wanted to, I could call up a legion of angels. and They would tear the door down. I'd come on anyway, but I'm not going to do that. I'll stand and I'll knock. But here's the challenge. And I'm almost through. Here's the challenge. I'm standing and knocking. I'm standing and knocking. I'm trying to get into my own church. But I understand how the church is in 2024. I understand how the church, I know how they operate in 2024. I know now you're, yeah, you got a CEO now. You got to say, I, I know now you got all these boards and committees and you got to run it by some board and you got to run it by some committee. I, I know how the church goes now. I know the majority got to go with it. And vote on whether or not we can open the door. He says, I know how churches operate. He said, but I'm not waiting on a committee. Y'all ain't hearing me. I ain't waiting on the recommendation of a majority. He says, uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to give it, put it right in your lap. So I'm going to stand at the door and knock. And if any one of y'all, oh, y'all hear me, you ain't got to wait on the committee to vote on it. You ain't got to wait on the CEO to say it's all right. If any one of you will open up the door, you will hear my voice and open up. He said, don't worry about what the crowd is doing. Are y'all hearing me? If any one of you will just open up the door, he says, I'll come in. Somebody ought to shout. He said, if you'll just open up the door, you ain't got to wait on your friend. Just open up the door and let him come in. We used to sing back home, open the door and open it wide yeah, and let him come in. He'll be your friend. Yeah, he'll be your friend. If you open the door, yes, uh, open it wide and let him come in. Are y'all hearing me? And the reason why you ought to open the door, yes, is because if you're really going to be a church, Jesus has got to be on the inside. If you're really going to be a church, Jesus needs to be in the center of everything we do. Yeah, Y'all ain't hearing me. I know it's a brand new day. Yeah, and I know that everything is done brand new. Yeah, but I'm just me. Yeah, I'm just like uh, the Lord made me. Yeah, and I've learned that before I leave the house of God, yeah, tell me about Abraham. Yeah, tell me about Isaac and tell me about Jacob. Yeah. Tell me about Peter, James, and John. Yeah. But before the benediction, I want to hear somebody call the name Jesus. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. Before the benediction, yeah. I want somebody yeah, to say that he picked up my cross yeah, and put it on his shoulder. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. All else you do, go ahead and do it. But before I go home, tell me that they stretched him wide. And he never said a mumbling word. Tell me how they hung him on an old right cross. How they nailed his hands. And he never said a word. How they nailed his feet. And he never said a word. Before I go home. Tell me that he hung his head and died. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. Before the benediction, somebody got to tell me that they laid him in a barry tomb. Y'all ain't hearing me. And that he lay there all night Friday. Lay there all day Saturday. Yeah. Lay there, yeah. 
all night Saturday night but before I go home I want to hear somebody say it was early 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 Sunday morning that he got up he got up with all power in his hand yes 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 Yes, before I go home, I, I want to hear somebody say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he pitied my every groan. Long as I live and trouble rise, I'll hasten. Yes. Keep Jesus at the center. Of everything you do. Thank God for the new church. Thank God for all the new things we're learning how to do. But please keep Jesus in the center of all. You want to be around for another 154 years? Keep Jesus at the center of everything that you do. Behold, I stand. At the door and knock. If any one of you, don't wait on the crowd. If any one of you will come and open the door, I'll come in and I'll sit with you. Amen. Amen. I, I, I know, I know it's a new day now. I know it's a new day now, and I know we don't do things the way we used to do them. But I'm just, it's some, there's some stuff just in me. It's just, it's in me. And there's some singing that we used to do. We don't do it. No, we don't do it like we used to do. No. But some singing that we used to do. And I, I can feel like, feel like we can do it in here. <laughs> open the door. Open it wide. Let him come in. Open the door. Open it. That is. Let him come in. Oh. Open the door, open it, and let him come in. Yeah. Open the door, open it wide, let him come in. He'll be your friend, he'll be your friend, he'll be your friend. 